All right, we'll get started. We'd like to welcome Chris Kirk into the interview room here at the Rocket Mortgage Classic. Uh, Chris, your, your fifth straight start here, finishing the top 25 each of your previous four starts. Uh, what do you like so much about coming to Detroit Golf Club and the Rocket Mortgage Classic? Yeah, definitely one of my favorite events of the year. I, I love the golf course. Um, just really great, classic, old school. Um, no tricks about it, but, you know, right there in front of you, just go, go play some good golf and, and you'll do all right. We've got six weeks left in the regular season here. I know you've got all kinds of goals in front of you in terms of how far you want to advance in the FedEx Cup playoffs and, and the, coming into the week number 10 in the President's Cup standings. Uh, what are some of those goals for you uh, as, we, as we finish up the regular season here? Yeah, my, my focus is, is mostly on, uh, on the Open Championship and then our, our playoffs. You know, um, as far as the President's Cup is, is concerned, um, I feel like that's something that, e that will either take care of itself or it won't. Um, you know, I'm, I'm in good, pretty good position the the FedEx Cup playoffs right now, so I'm going to take a little bit of time off after the, after the Open and rest up and, and try to get myself physically back, you know, at, at 100% and, and ready to go. All right, we'll take some questions out here. If you have a question, we'll get a microphone to you. Questions? Oh, we got one over here on the left. Hi, Rachel Hopmeyer, CBS Detroit. You have the experience on this course. You know that it's a low-scoring course. Does that add any, any pressure, or do you prefer that type of setup? Uh, no, no, no added pressure for sure. Um, I think that I I really enjoy the the variety of setups that the tour presents us. Um, you know, the Memorial Tournament and Pinehurst, for example, were both incredible tests and uh, both incredible golf courses and, and really, really fun weeks. But I'm, I'm glad that it's not like that every single week where uh, we'd all be pretty exhausted after a little while. And, um, you know, I enjoy events like the Century this year where, you know, we're shooting close to, to 30 under and, and uh, the Amex tournament and all those too. But I'm, I'm also glad that it doesn't take take 30 under to win every single week so um you know i just really enjoy the the variety of of golf that we get to play brendan over here on the right hey chris um can can you kind of uh, take us into what what your your philosophies are when it comes to planning your schedule and you know when when to take some time off and when to you know go on a run of of playing and, and things like that yeah i i mostly try to to plan out my schedule, you know, looking through the, the year and into the summer as in, of going to places where I've tended to play well. I mean, that's kind of the number one priority. Um, this year with the creation of the signature events for me has been pretty different um, because I've, I've played some tournaments that I don't normally play and I wouldn't say that it's really worked out that, that well for me. Um, you know, events, like the Travelers Championship, that's a fantastic golf course and one of the best run tournaments that we have all year. Um, but I have not traditionally played that well there, you know, and I did it again last week. I didn't play particularly well. So um, that's going to be something for me to, to maybe reassess going into, into next season. Um, you know, I actually had this conversation with with Rory a few years ago when, when we were looking into doing all this. And um, for someone like Rory or Scotty Scheffler, and, you know, I talked to him, I was like, I, you probably show up at any golf course in the world and feel like you, you can or maybe should win the golf tournament. Um, but there's only a few guys probably that feel that way. The bulk of the PGA Tour um, do not feel that way. And so we, we like to kind of pick and choose our, our places that we like to play based on where we have a good history, you know. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll be interested to see what I end up doing doing next year. I think the signature events are, are a fantastic thing. It gives the opportunity for, for fans and, and events to have, you know, all of the best players in the world together is, is a pretty awesome thing. Um, but, admit, you know, I'll just I'll be interested to see what I, what I end up doing next year. 
So is there is there a ge generally a different feeling? I don't know if that's the right way of saying it, but like a, a different feeling for the majority of the field at an event like this. You know, there's no one in the top 20 in the world here this week, but this there's the most players this event has ever had between 20 and 100. Yeah. Um, it, it, I don't know if it maybe feels a little bit more open, a little more up for grabs. It, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, is there any kind of, of, of vibe or, or difference than maybe a signature event? I haven't really felt much difference, if any, to be honest with you. I mean, if you, I think it's just one of those things that the game of golf has, has an incredible uh, depth of talent. And so, you know, I mean, I feel like if I went and played a, a Corn Ferry Tour event, I wouldn't feel like I really had much advantage there either, you know. So, um, yeah, I think it's uh, every PGA Tour event, you know, you can look at the metrics of how how strong the field is or, or, or whatever, but, um, you know, you're going to have to play to win, to finish top ten, whatever. You're going to have to play some some truly incredible golf any given week. Any other questions for Chris? All right, we appreciate your time and best of luck this week. Yep, thank you.